Hello there, people of the world. So, um, I figured I would do it a little bit differently than uh, I normally am going to do it, um, recording the orchestration part of the process. Um, the reason is, it's such a labor-intensive process, and it is so detail-oriented that I think it would be boring and not necessarily the uh, very constructive for you to just see me sit there and tinker with things over and over again until I get the sound that I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of orchestrate... Um, maybe four, eight bars at a time, different sections, um, maybe little bits at a time, like I'll do something and then I'll sort of turn the video on and show you what I did and then I'll do something else and then turn the video on and show you what you did, something like that. Um, that way I can sort of, I can, it, it's fresh in my mind and I can talk to you specifically about what I'm doing and demonstrate it and explain it, but you don't have to sit there and see me, you know, tinker with things, which is just, again, it's, it would fill up, <laughs> it would, it would fill up a lot of, uh, unnecessary video length. So yeah, I hope you get something out of this and I hope you enjoy Let's uh, go ahead and uh, get started. All right, so um, my apologies for using a camera instead of screen capture software, but I figure you would prefer good audio over um, necessarily the best screen resolution because this camera is going to get a lot better audio through the speakers than um, the screen capture software is going to get through my onboard microphone. Anyway, so yeah, so I haven't started anything yet, but I do have the project ready. I've decided to call it Defending Our Homeland, kind of the generic, <laughs> not necessarily the most... Uh, exciting title, but I might come up with something better later. All right, so just letting you know my instrumentation before we get started. Um, we are um, going with uh, piccolo, two flutes, two oboes, two clarinets, two bassoons, contra bassoon, six horns, three trumpets, two trombones, bass trombone, tuba, timpani, bass drum, cymbals, gong, snare drum, glockenspiel, xylophone, piano, harp, and string section. That's going to be our, um, uh, that's gonna be our, our, our orchestration, um, or orchestral setup or instrumentation. Um, I am I'm doing it a little bit unconventionally because usually you have wins and twos or wins and threes, so it's a little bit odd that I have, for example, three flute players, the third one being the auxiliary piccolo, and then I only have two oboe players, you know, why didn't I opt to have an English horn or a bass clarinet, and it's just simply that while I may have those particular players if this was for a live group for wins and three, um, I probably wouldn't use the English horn for this particular cue because the English horn is a lot softer than the oboe. So it's not necessarily the most useful for doing runs and things like that. Um, it's more of a solo instrument, and since this is going to be a fairly big, tooty, bombastic piece the whole time, I, I don't foresee a use for the English horn. Uh, same thing with the bass clarinet. Um, I mean, it's a great instrument, but it's not nearly as loud or piercing as like a, a bassoon or contra bassoon, for example. Whereas the bassoon fits excellently for doubling things that are written for the cello, and the contra bassoon works at excellently. Um, doubling things that are for the contrabass. So I sort of, I, I like this setup. I like having my horns uh, in six. Um, the primary reason is because, you know, obviously you get a really big, full, delicious sound if you want all of them on a single melody. Um, plus it's divisible by two as well as three. So you can have like two note chords and it works well. Um, or you can have uh, three note triads and have two horns per note on a triad, which works out quite well, especially with the type of thing that I'm going for. Three trumpets, perfect for triads, and that balance is that balances well out with the horns too, because you know, dynamically speaking, generally two horns is about the equal dynamics of one trumpet or one trombone. They're a little bit quieter, especially since their bell faces the opposite direction of the audience. So yeah, so six horns, uh, three trumpets, three trombones, two of them being normal trombones or tenor trombones, and then the uh, bass trombone, which is going to be probably doubling a lot of stuff with the uh, with the tuba. Um, yeah, timpani. Um, I, of course, you know, bass drum is going to be doubling a lot of the stuff that the timpani is going to be doing. I have two sets of cymbals, one for suspended cymbal and one for crash cymbal. Then I have a gong, which I'm planning on using in a few specific spots. Um, snare drum, of course. Uh, glockenspiel, although I'm not, I might, sometimes the glockenspiel gives a little bit of a childish timbre or texture, so I'm not sure if I'm, I'm going to try it out and I might, I may or may not stick with it by the end of the piece. Xylophone is great for like, cuts and accents, especially in this lower register. Um, piano, the bass register of the piano is really great for like doubling, stuff like that in the bottom register, which could be useful, as well as, you know, w w runs or like, you know, our chords and stuff to sort of fill in the harmonic texture. And then of course, you obviously you need a harp. So yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off by orchestrating the very first introduction section of the piece. You can consult your sheet music, um, you know, that I posted on the previous video. Um, if you want to, you know, sort of remind yourself what we were doing, um, and then I will get back to you when I have completed it. All right, so step one, get the brass chorale written out. So I basically just took that simple idea, you know, bum, uh, excuse me, oh my gosh. Right, you remember it. Um, and extrapolated it onto... Uh, 
if that's even a word extrapolated uh, <clears throat> onto the trumpets trombones bass trombones tubas as well as did some bass doubling so first we just took that um, uh, three-part chorale just on the trumpets So, and then I took that and basically just simply had the same thing on the trombones an octave lower because the trombone's range is, um, is very similar to the trumpet's an octave lower. In other words, it, what sounds good on the trumpet um, is going to sound good on the trombone an octave lower, just the way their ranges work out. Because, you know, the top B flat on the trumpet up, up high is uh, a very, you know, it's, it's kind of the peak, really powerful top note, and it's the exact same thing for the trombone an octave lower. So, um, yeah, so then I just uh, doubled it with the trombones. Sounds pretty good. And then I took the bass line that I've written in the four parts and put it on the bass trombone and then the tuba and octave lower. And then in order to reinforce that bass line, just because, you know, so many high instruments, <laughs> it's good to reinforce the bass line. I took the uh, trom bass trombone line, doubled it on the cello, and I took the contra bass line and, uh, um, or sorry, I took the tuba line and put it on the uh, contra bass or the uh, double bass. And then I did the same thing with the bassoons and the cellos. As you can see up here, I took the, the uh, bass trombone line, put it on the bassoons and on the contra bassoons. And you should notice that uh, for the really low doubling, I took out that da da dun 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 and I just simplified it to dum, bum, 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 uh, because they can't double tongue that fast. So I just simplified it a little bit since it's so low, especially for the tuba, because their embouchure has to be so big that if they have to repeat, repeatedly articulated note like that, it's going to use it more breath than they need to. And even though I haven't written breath marks, um, the, a real players would find a place to breathe. Like, for example, there are holds in the texture, like bum, ba da dum, bum, bum. So even right there, they can breathe bum, ba da bum, 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 ba ba bum, 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 ba da bum, bum, bum. The reason I left it tied is because I didn't want it to be really short. I wanted to ma make them basically hold it as long as possible. Um, and, you know, some of the players might even be able to stagger breathe and have uh, different spots where they breathe. So, yeah, so the full texture with bass doubling sounds like this. Awesome sauce. And the bass line, normally it was, uh, you know, bum, bum, boom, uh, moving downward along with the melody, but I actually just made it solid quarters, bum, bum, boom. So that way there's a little a bit of rhythmic uh, difference going on. So it's like bum, bum. So you can see, I'll just play one of the, um, I'll just play the bass trombone and uh, the, the trombone, you can hear the difference rhythmically. See, so it gives a nice sort of busyness to the texture. So now all we have to do for this particular section is just add percussion, and I may do some high wind stuff as well, or high string stuff, but we'll see. Um, how well it works out because we have such a heavy brass going it's going to be difficult to have any, it's going to be difficult to have anything else being heard in the background but as long as we keep the brass at you know just one f and then we put everything else at double f we should we should be okay balance wise um but we'll see what happens Alrighty then so um added a bunch more stuff we pretty much have if you can look and see <laughs> the full orchestra going now so um, I'll go ahead and talk about the uh, percussion that I've added. So I'll just play the percussion by itself um, so you can kind of hear. I kind of was trying to fill in the space for what the melody actually was not doing where it accents some things. But sometimes, for example, when the main melody does triplets, then I try to do just normal quarters. So, so you get that nice little rhythmic difference between the two of them and vice versa when the, you know, when the melody was on triplets and I want quarters, and when the melody was on quarters I want triplets, things like that. I'll play just the percussion by itself. I use timpani, bass drum, cymbals, and a gong in a very specific spot. Nice little choke cymbal at the end right there. That together with the brass section is going to sound like this. So. select the gong there. All right, so yeah, so besides that, what I've added is this string counter line, which is uh, 
Um, violas and violins too are doubling down an octave, and then up uh, above that we have the second violins. So they sort of play their own little ostinato-based counter melody thing. You know, uh, notice I left out the first note, so that way the first punch of the trumpets bum, ba -da -dum, is really heard. So, bum, doo -doo 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 -doo. so I gave a little bit of room so that that first punch is really, really, um, uh, really heavy. So I'll just go ahead and play it. So again, it, it, it has, does its own thing, and then it sort of joins the melody for a second over here for this really big push, and then it goes um, and does other things. So we'll just play the string stuff by itself. So, and because of the fact that we have a double so much, I, uh, you know, a single F is going to work because I don't want it to, I don't want it to overshadow the melody. I want the melody to definitely be the main star. So you can hear it, um, you know, nicely enough in the background since the fact that you have, you know, for, if you have violins, one violins, two and violas playing, that's a lot of players playing that. So, um, I didn't feel the need to bring in the glockenspiel, xylophone, piano, or harp at all for this particular spot, you know, sort of save them for later. So then after that, I took the winds, which basically double the melody. Um, which actually works quite well, especially for the flutes and piccolos. It's a really nice high range up there because the high note is G. And then I just gave them a little wind run at the end, so this is this is what they sound like. All right. So all together, that sounds like this. We have a nice, full, delicious ending. So now onward to orchestrate the um, uh, to orchestrate the main melody. So yep, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna be the end of this video. I'm gonna have them broken up into little segments so it's easier for me to you know work on this and record it with my busy schedule. So yeah, so we have completed our introduction. Um, uh, yeah, I look forward to working on more of the piece. <laughs>